Hello, everybody. Miss PT again from WCA Biology. Um, this recording is for Unit 3, Lesson 8 of Biology B. So, again, I feel like this is quite um, a lot of review in this unit, just kind of putting stuff together to see how it fits. So our keywords are aerobic respiration, adenosine triphosphate, anaerobic respiration, cell membrane, cellular respiration, eukaryotic, mitochondria, photosynthesis, and prokaryotic. All right, and just a reminder, guys, right below my video link on my website, there is the link to the study guide that goes with this. So please click on that. Be taking notes kind of as we go through this because I have pulled out the key information from this lesson. All right, so describing the flow of energy. I'm really just talking about how energy flows through an ecosystem from one organism to another, essentially through the processes of photosynthesis and respiration. So again, stuff we've kind of talked about before, right? So we all need energy to be able to grow, to reproduce, to perform all of our cellular functions for life. Energy and life go hand in hand, right? So photosynthesis is how producers most producers, primary producers that are photoautotrophic, how they are able to take energy from the sun and actually use that energy in conjunction with matter, carbon dioxide, and water to produce um, more complex molecules, produce sugars. They can use that sugar themselves and they can sustain themselves all by themselves. That's pretty awesome. We can't, so we have to eat them or we eat things that eat them right? But that energy is then transferred to different levels in an ecosystem through the process of eating things, essentially. So in our photosynthesis, we have our, um, we have our reactants, carbon dioxide, water, energy, sometimes referred to as radiant energy. And then we have our products. It produces sugar, it produces oxygen. So those are our inputs or our reactants and our outputs, also known as our products, right? And so producers provide one step in the flow of matter and energy in an ecosystem. Again, remember that 10% rule, only 10% of the energy that is produced by photoautotrophs here are able to be transferred to the next trophic level. So if you are a plant eater, a primary consumer, you are only have 10% of the energy that has been stored by plants to be able to then use that energy for yourself. And then when you eat it, something that eats you, God forbid, right? The second order consumers, only 10% of the energy of the primary consumers is available to the next level in the trophic pyramid. That's that 10% rule. The other 90% is used by organisms to perform regular cellular functions. It's given off as heat. It's waste products because, you know, you don't, can't take all the energy out when you eat stuff or it, it's, it's decomposed later when you die. Um, cellular, process, cellular respiration is then how we utilize the energy of the food that we've eaten. So it is utilized by the cell. It's done by all living things in one way, shape, or form, either aerobically or anaerobically. Um, essentially, this energy is extracted from sugars in cellular respiration, and it is used um, in a form as known as adenosine triphosphate. Now the energy itself isn't adenosine triphosphate. I think that's a little bit misleading. Energy is energy, energy is not matter. But the energy is stored in a molecule called adenosine triphosphate, ATP. It's more readily available because it's literally stored in that second phosphate or that um, third phosphate group that's bonded there. So you have adenosine diphosphate, yeah, that extra phosphate group that's added, the chemical bond that adds that extra phosphate group stores energy. 
and it's more it's easily removed and then utilized by the cell much more so than in a very complex molecule like glucose or in other even more complex molecules like starches and stuff like that so it's not energy in and of itself i feel like that's kind of what it says in the lesson but that's not true it is a storage vehicle for energy energy is again energy matter is matter they're not the same thing but Energy is being stored in the chemical bonds of adenosine triphosphate here. Cellular respiration can be aerobic, it can be, or it can be anaerobic. Both produce adenosine triphosphate, right? Again, as I said in the previous lesson, aerobic respiration produces just a lot more of that ATP. Around 36 ATP are produced for every glucose molecule in aerobic respiration. In anaerobic respiration, which is also known as fermentation, you get a net of two ATP, so significantly less, which is totally fine if you're a little tiny anaerobic bacteria. Not so good if you're human because we need lots more energy than that. Um, so our cellular respiration, um, if you are a little guy, a little prokaryotic bacteria, then you don't have organelles, you don't have mitochondria and stuff like that. So respiration takes place in either the cytoplasm or the cell membrane in prokaryotic cells because they don't have mitochondria. They don't have membrane-bound organelles. That's one of the definitions of what makes a eukaryote a eukaryote, right? Pretty much the definition that makes a eukaryote a eukaryote. And eukaryotic cells like our cells, or even in things like protists and fungi and plants or whatever, they have mitochondria. And mitochondria are membrane-bound organelles. And so aerobic respiration takes place within the mitochondria in both plant, animal, fungi, protists, all those types of eukaryotic cells. Again, the process is um, done to produce ATP, which is a very, very short-term energy storage molecule. Uh, do, do, this shows you kind of the equation for cellular respiration, glucose and oxygen. Um, you get, you then release water and carbon dioxide. And it's showing you here, this illustration is, is meant to show you conservation of matter, that the same number of white and gray dots and red dots are found on the left side of the equation as they are on the right side because matter is conserved here. And so we can reflect this through this balanced chemical equation at the bottom. Um, in anaerobic respiration, these are anaerobes like yeasts and other types of anaerobic bacteria, you do anaerobic respiration, which is also known as fermentation. And so again, two types of fermentation. The first type, lactic acid fermentation, is done in cells like ours that are not anaerobic cells, but in certain situations where you need a little extra energy and you don't have enough oxygen to give you that extra energy and so your cells can perform a little bit of anaerobic respiration just to give you a short burst of energy and the process releases um, lactic acid so it's a byproduct of that lactic acid fermentation very creative name as you can see the other type of fermentation alcoholic fermentation is done by organisms that are anaerobics aka our anaerobes, right? And these anaerobes, they do not do aerobic respiration. They only do anaerobic respiration. They don't have the need for oxygen. Um, so they just do anaerobic respiration. The byproduct of breaking down glucose in this situation is carbon dioxide and alcohol. Um, so that's what they give off as products. And it produces a little bit of ATP. In both situations, two ATP is generated in fermentation. Again, it's just a tiny burst of energy for us, but for those anaerobic organisms, it's pretty much all they need because they're just little tiny guys. So um, again, these play a role in cycling. Our photosynthesis and cellular respiration have a big role in cycling matter and energy huge role. It's not the only role, right? We also have decomposition that happens and stuff like that, but it is a very large part of cycling matter throughout the ecosystem, cycling carbon, cycling oxygen, you know, cycling um, water and stuff through the ecosystem as well. All of this occurs because of these two processes 
And just remember that 10% rule. And I think that's kind of the last part of this. Otherwise, there's just a lot of like check-ins and practice here. Um, it's again, kind of a summary lesson in a way, but hopefully you guys get really understanding this at this point. I'm hoping so. Um, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next lesson.